Hi and welcome to Conversations with Robin. Today's program is on counselling for emotional well-being and our first guest is Lyndall Briggs. Amongst other things, Lyndall is the President of the Australian Society of Clinical Hypnotherapists and she is also Vice President of the New South Wales Counselling Association. Lyndall has some 20 years of experience and wealth in counselling. Our second guest, Martin Hunter-Jones. Martin is the founder and president of the New South Wales Counselling Association and also has some 16 years experience. We'll meet Martin later. First though, please welcome Lyndall Briggs. Hi. And welcome. And thank you, Lyndall. Thank you. I have to admit when I went onto your website and just saw all your list of titles, how do you have the time to do so much? Um, I guess you could say I've got a very supportive family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because amongst other things, the president mm -hmm. of the... ASCH, Australian Society of Clinical Hypnotherapists. Yep, and vice president? New South Wales Counselling Association. And what else do you do? Study, <laughs> um, study, um, see a lot of clients mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I'm pretty active in a few other areas as well. Yeah. You do NLP? Yes. Yep. Uh, hypnotherapy? Yes. What other modalities do you use in your counselling? Uh, I would say um, in, within the counselling I do solution focused, um, CBT which is cognitive behaviour therapy, mm -hmm. um, gestalt and um, I've trained a little bit in TA which is transactional analysis. Mm -hmm. And is it EFT? Oh yes, EFT. Yeah. Um, which is the tapping thing? Yes, yeah. yes it is. Yes, <laughs> yes. And we might, might come back to that. Okay. Firstly though Linda, let's find out a little bit about your personal journey. Mm -hmm. And I believe your parents were really into <laughs> personal development. They certainly are. Yeah. Can you yes. tell a little bit about that? Um, well, mum and dad were uh, entertainers mm -hmm. in their um, younger years. They were um, acrobats, comedy acrobatic, um, and travelled quite extensively around Australia with uh, touring shows. And um, from there, um, I think dad was a little bit more interested in the physical side of things, the chiropractic side of things. So he studied that overseas. At, times. Um, mm -hmm. So at all times they've always been quite philosophical um, and we were brought up with that um, that interest in humans I guess you could say. Okay and you got dropped on your head. Yes I did. <laughs> could you yes. share some of that? I did indeed. Um, <laughs> I think probably a few times. But, um, the main event was um, falling out of a car mm -hmm. um, travelling on a dirt road and landing on my head which caused um, quite a bit of uh, damage, I fractured my skull, I was only about three mm -hmm. and I guess the advantage to that was that the show that we were travelling with had a stage hypnotist mm -hmm. and because of the headaches that um, were created from the, the uh, accident, he used to put me to sleep every night and... It, with hypnotherapy? With hypnotherapy. Yeah, or hypnotism? Yeah. Yes, yeah. so okay. I guess it was there for a long time. You okay. know? And later on dad became... Because of, I think, the, um, what happened from there and he could see how effective it was for me, later on in his life he um, studied hypnotherapy and became a, a member of the um, ASCH. Amazing. Yes. And it wasn't until you were actually um, working as a counsellor, I believe, you hmm? found your, was it your grandmother's? Great-grandmother. Great My mum's great-grandmother, great-grandmother, yes, had books um, we found hidden away that she was actually looking into mesmerism, which was hypnotherapy at the time. And it's quite, to me, it's quite intriguing to read her notes in the margins and realise that a lot of things haven't changed. And a lot of things have changed. Yeah. I think the dates you said on some of those books, 1894 or something? Yes, 1894 and I think 1892 is the other uh, one. Yeah. Collector's items. <laughs> well, they're treasures, treasures for me, yes. <laughs> um, and so you left school? Yes. Did some, I don't know, office type jobs? No, went overseas for a couple of years with yeah. mum and dad touring yeah. first. Okay. Um, yeah, travelled pretty extensively for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and then came back and did, yeah, got married and um, did office work and bar work. And then had my son and um, we then went into a health food business. business. Yep, and so studied nutrition mm -hmm. um, there. We were there for about five years. Okay. Um, and you had a couple of clothing? I oh, know, went into um, 
I actually went from the health food shop into an aquarium. Um, decided to work with fish instead of people for a while. And then um, went into the public service mm -hmm. for a while. And then um, from there went into back into retail and had a couple of dress shops. Okay. And somewhere in that journey you started doing volunteer counselling yes. work with the Salvation Army. Yes. About what yeah. year was that? Oh. Um, <laughs> I think it was around 87 or something. Something like that, yeah. yeah. I was there as a volunteer for about four or five years yeah. and then went, stopped the dress, um, sold the shops yeah. and went on as staff okay. with the care line. Yep. I remember one of the things that you said when I met up with you mm -hmm. was how humble. Ah, yes. Yeah, working for the, within the care line it certainly um, changed my attitude to people a lot. Mm -hmm. Could you share a little bit about that? I just think working with those sort of people, um, volunteers and the Salvation Army people was just an honour yeah. here. Um, just like giving people, you know, always striving to, to help. Yeah. Would you recommend that as a starting point for people who may be looking at moving into the counselling field? I oh, couldn't recommend it highly enough. Yeah. Um, the training's good. Um, it's a really good grounding and everything and the experience of working with a good team of people, good support is, um, yeah, wonderful. So how did you move into hypnotherapy as a... As well, a... I'd say because Dad was a hypnotherapist mm -hmm. and it was something that we'd been talking about for many, many years, mm -hmm. um, and as much as I love straight counselling, which every, every client's different, so some of you would just do straight counselling with. Can you explain straight counselling? Not hypnotherapy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Fair um, yeah, it, it's more conversational, okay. you know, maybe solution focused uh, so that you're just talking to people, um, figuring out what the problem was mm -hmm. and what they actually want and how you can get there mm -hmm. um, in a you know, sort of straight way. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, no, just um, from, from doing the counselling, um, I went off and did the training um, to be a hypnotherapist, which takes a couple of years mm -hmm. as well. And, um, yeah, just from there, I opened up my own practice and then it just became too much to do full-time uh, care line work yeah. and, and have the practice as well. So um, left the care line, sadly, um, and mm. then just was in full-time practice because you do really miss the support that you get there from other people. Okay, so tell us a little bit about how hypnotherapy differs from straight counselling, which I've never heard that term. <laughs> there you go. Okay, um, how does it differ? I guess because you are allowing the person to go inside internally to resolve their issues, um, which, and in, in a trance-like state, in a relaxed state, and they have access to other areas of their mind that they wouldn't when they're just talking. Okay. Now, I know over the years when people have talked about hypnotherapy, mm -hmm. they'll say, oh, well, you know, suggestions are planted. Mm -hmm. um, it's imagination. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that? You know, we often talk about it, like, and we use a lot of metaphors within our therapy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the metaphor I would probably use most is like gardening. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a garden that's got a lot of weeds in it. First you've got to remove the weeds mm -hmm. and then you've got to add a lot of fertiliser, look after the soil, water, seeds and nurturing. And that's a little bit the same you do. You do have to remove some of the negative thoughts, negative behaviours that people have got and then maybe you do plant some seeds but you also have to nurture it. Okay. We're going to take a break. Mm -hmm. And we'll come back and find out a little more about your journey and hypnotherapy. Thank you, Rob.